Welcome everyone to worship at Sandal and welcome to everyone joining us later on YouTube. I invite you to share with our call to worship this morning and Alison's going to put the words on the screen for us. Lord God, we are here to worship you. We pray that you will meet with us through your Holy Spirit. Teach us through your word. Show us where we need to change and give us all we need to serve you in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's a joy and, dare I say, a relief to be able to worship God in song together, even as we invite you to keep your masks on whilst you're singing. I do invite you to stand as you're able if you would sing with us, My Jesus, My Saviour, number 363 in Singing the Faith. So let's pray together. I invite you to share with me the words in bold on the screen. For the world, with all its beauty and fruitfulness, we thank you, God. 
for men, women and children all over the world. We thank you, God. For our own families and friends, we thank you, God. For school, work and time to relax and enjoy ourselves, we thank you, God. For all the interesting things there are to see and do and learn, we thank you, God. For all your gifts, fruit of soil and sun, work of human hands, we thank you, God. Thank you for all the good things you have given us. Amen. Thanks be to God. That prayer and much of the service this morning is adapted from material provided for use in churches by the All Age Worship Resources website, written by Jane Hume. So at this time of year, our thoughts often turn to holidays and things have been a bit different again this year, but hopefully people have been able to take a break, whether at home or someone else's home, or away to the country or seaside. Many people have braved the testing requirements and potential quarantine to go to Sunshine Islands and foreign shores. But what about a desert island? We've got a selection of items at the front here, you may see them better on the screen, which may or may not be useful if you were going to try and survive for a week on a desert island. We've got a few things here, we've got a mobile phone, got a loaf of bread, a bottle of water, a blanket, sleeping bag is, uh, is shown on the screen. But if you could choose just three of these things, which might you take to try and survive for a week on a desert island? So can we have a show of hands? Who thinks, who thinks a £20 note might be useful if you were going to try and survive a week on a desert island? I'm not getting any takers for this at all. Okay, what about then a loaf of bread? Is anybody interested in taking that for a week on a desert island? I'm seeing a lot of hands. A lot of hands are in the room. That's good. Okay. What about a blanket or a sleeping bag? How useful do we think that might be? There are a few hands. There are a few hands showing in the room. Okay, what about this one then? Who would, if you could choose three things, it's a Bible, it's the good news version, not everybody's favourite. How useful do you think this one would be on a desert island if you were only taking three of the things? Mixed bag, one or two, one or two think yes, one or two think no. Okay, and what about a bottle of water? Uh, pretty much, yeah, pretty much everybody is keen on the water, so that's, uh, that's interesting. So not surprisingly, bread and water got lots of votes. Bread, or other food, and water are essential for our survival. Scientists tell us that without water, most of us would expire after about three days. Without food, we may last a little longer, about three weeks or so. And that's the way we've been created, to need regular food and drink. As we know, when our bodies need food or water, we become hungry or thirsty. And that causes us to go and get something to eat or drink to satisfy that hunger or thirst. That hunger and thirst might be a bit like a warning light that shows us what our bodies need to keep alive. A bit like the warning light that comes on when your car starts to run out of petrol. But let's go back to the idea of bread. I'm going to ask for, I think, David to share our reading now. Thanks, David. Verses 51 to 58, and I'm reading from the Good News Bible. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If you eat this bread, you will live forever. The bread that I will give you is my flesh, which I give you so that the world may live. 
This started an angry argument among them. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they asked. Jesus said to them, I am telling you the truth. If you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in yourselves. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them to life on the last day. For my flesh is the real food, my blood is the real drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood live in me, and I live in them. The living Father sent me, and because of him I live also. In the same way, whoever eats me will live because of me. This then is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the bread that your ancestors ate, but then later died. Those who eat this bread will live forever. Amen. David. I invite you to stand as you're able to share the song As the Deer Pants for the Water. It's number 544 in Singing the Faith. ago the lectionary included the story of the feeding of the 5,000. So you might have heard that in church quite recently. But Jesus hadn't come to satisfy people's physical hunger with bread. This amazing miracle of feeding was a sign pointing to the fact that Jesus had come to satisfy a much deeper hunger within each one of us 
a hunger that we sometimes try and satisfy in other ways. See what you think of this monologue. There's nothing decent to watch on television anymore. It's either repeats or reality shows. I'm getting really bored with the same old programmes. I just long for something different. I might as well switch it off. Ah, let's have a look at Facebook, seeing what's going on with my friends. Hmm, everybody seems to be having such exciting times. Bessie's going scuba diving at the weekend. Lucky girl. Emma is off to the Maldives with her family for a fortnight. And Megan, she's having a hot tub fitted in her back garden. My life is so boring. I get up, I go to work, I come back home, eat dinner. Then I it's either going swimming, dancing, or watching the TV. I wish there was some point to all of this. At least I have a holiday in a couple of weeks' time. Now there's a thought. I might meet someone nice while I'm away. Last year I met this really cool guy and we hung out together for a few days. But, and of course there's always a but. When we got home I never heard from him again. I felt so upset for weeks afterwards. I thought that he really liked me, but obviously not. I wonder if I will ever find someone who will truly love me. Oh well, I suppose I could go shopping again. A couple of days ago I bought this really cool trendy t-shirt. I haven't got anything to go with it. So perhaps I should go and get myself a new pair of jeans. And while I'm there I think I might need a new pair of trainers and a scarf to match my t-shirt. The problem is, I've only got £20 left until the end of the month. I wish I earned more money. I never seem to have enough. There's always more things I want. The funny thing is, that once I've bought something new, I am often fed up with it within a few weeks. It doesn't seem to satisfy me anymore. I wonder if anything will ever satisfy me. Perhaps I ought to play the lottery. Imagine winning a million pounds and what all, all I could buy with it. I could have my own house, my own yacht, my own swimming pool, my own Porsche, my own 50 inch television, or an endless supply of designer clothes. How amazing would that be? Or would it? The millionaires I see in our newspaper always look so miserable. Perhaps, of lots, perhaps having lots of stuff doesn't really satisfy. I wish I could find someone who could tell me where to find everlasting satisfaction. Nothing seems to satisfy. So where do we find this sort of lasting satisfaction? Where do we go to satisfy the deep hunger for life that is within each one of us? As we just heard from Sally's character, we can look for it in all sorts of places. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's clothes, sometimes it's holidays, or television, or even relationships, social media. We look in those and other places to bring us the deep satisfaction we long for, but as we might have discovered, things of this life, however good they are, never fully satisfy us. The inner hunger that is longing to be satisfied is still there. After Jesus had fed all those people, some of them came to talk with him later as we heard in our reading. And Jesus said this, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus wasn't talking about endless supplies of bread and water, but about something much deeper. He says he is the one who can truly satisfy the deepest hunger and the deepest thirst in each one of us. Jesus says that he is the one who gives life to us, deep, satisfying and eternal life. Let's pray together. The words are on the screen if you'd like to share them with us. Lord Jesus, we come to you believing that you are the bread of life. You alone are the one who can truly satisfy us. Please forgive us for trying to satisfy our inner hunger with other things. We believe that you died for our sins when you hung on the cross. Please give us the gift of life that will satisfy us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I invite you to remain seated as we sing together, I Will Offer Up My Life, number 446 in Singing the Faith.
We're going to pray again, and the response to the prayers is in bold and underlined on the screens if you'd like to share it. Sally will say, you are the living bread. If you would respond, be our everything. You are the living bread. Be our everything. We give thanks for your people gathered here today. May we know your presence with us in this holy place. You are the living bread. Be our everything. We give thanks for God's redeeming grace at work in our lives. We pray for those who long to feel God's presence, but but who feel only distance. You are the living bread. Be Be our our everything. everything. We give thanks for the love of family and friends. We pray that we may draw alongside those who are lonely or unwell. We remember students who have received exam results this week, for those who have done better than they ever imagined, and those who are having to weigh up their their options. We pray for peace and hope. You are the living bread. Be Be our our everything. everything. We give thanks for the joy and security of being part of this community. May we always hold out a warm welcome to those who feel excluded by society. We pray for communities that have been torn apart. We remember the people of Plymouth and those affected by the shootings. We think about the earthquake in Haiti yesterday, for the people who have lost their homes and for families of those still missing and those who have died. You are the living bread, be Be our our everything. everything. We pray for reconciliation between families nations and between Christians and those of other faiths. We pray especially for the escalating situation in Afghanistan and all the people who have been displaced by the violence. May we embrace the things we have in common and learn to accept our differences. You are the living bread. Be our everything. We pray that we will continually work for a more compassionate world. We pray today for all that tomorrow may hold as we strive together to sing your wonderful story and live in the harmony and peace which you will have for all people. You are the living bread. Be Be our our everything. everything. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing again, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. It's number 545 in Singing the Faith.
Could I ask you to remain standing if you're able? We've, we've got to our closing prayers. I apologise for the timing this morning. We tend to run over when me and Sally do these. And it's, uh, you've, uh, we've changed the batting average anyway. Thank you for, for, for bearing with us. Jesus, you are the living bread. Keep us feeding on you so that our spirits are satisfied in you. And we pray for one another in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and all. Amen.